All right, now that you have your parts made for your C-clamp, it's time to go ahead and assemble them. So it's a pretty simple assembly. We have a body with a screw going into the back hole in here, and then a cap sitting on top of the screw. So we're going to start with the one part that moves around the least. And in this case, the screw rotates within the body. The cap uh, sits on the screw, which is also moving. So the body is kind of our stationary part. So let's go ahead and place our body. Um, and I'm going to just click wherever I want. And I'm done. I don't want to place more bodies. So I'm going to right click, click OK, or click Escape on your keyboard. I'm then going to go ahead and place other components. Now I want to place both of these. Um, so I'm going to just click and drag to select both of them. Click Open. and saves a little bit of time. There's both my parts. Again, right click, click OK. And there we go. So now we can start to constrain these. I want to make this screw go inside that hole there. So when I click on the constraint tool, I can select a couple different things on a circular part. I can select a face of it. If I zoom in, I can select the actual face. Or I can select a center point of a circle. Or I can select the axis. And I want to select the axis of this entire circle. Then on over here, I want to select the axis again. And there we go. It's inserted in there and it moves back and forth. Now, we can see one step I forgot to do is our first part can still move around. So I need to right click on it and ground it. And it's important that you do that. And you usually find out if you don't uh, when you first start trying to move things and, well, all of them move together. Now, you can see also if I move this, it can go through my clamp. We'll fix that in a little bit. Let's first put our cap back on, though. So I'm going to go to Constraint. And we are putting a circular object onto another circular object. So again, I can use the Insert Constraint. I want to <coughs> excuse me, look at the back of this cap. And I want to select the circle that is going to be resting against something else. So this back circle will be connected to this back circle here. That's where they'll be touching. So I'm going to select those two, and that just places the cap on it. Now, last thing to do is our screw, again, can go through our uh, body of the clamp. So let's fix that. I'm going to make another constraint. And this is going to be a regular limit constraint. I'm going to constrain the inside of my clamp to the back of my cap. And now that can't move at all. If I were to click OK, it's stuck. It won't move. But now we can go in and we can tell it to move via editing that constraint. So I want to find that constraint I just placed. So on my browser, I placed it on the cap. So I'm going to click the little plus to get to my cap. And we can see the two constraints I put on it. I have an insert constraint to place it on my screw. And then I have a make constraint where we just did that. So I want to edit my make constraint. So I'm going to double click on it. Oops, sorry. I'm going to right click on it and click edit. And we get back to this menu. Now, to make it so that it can move a little bit, I have a double arrow down here to expand this. I'm going to click that and get this thing right here. This allows me to limit my constraint movement. So I can give it a maximum and minimum how far it can move. So I want to select both of those. My minimum is going to stay 0 because that's not going to move from there. My maximum is going to be this distance. So if I look at that, we can see it's 2.5 inches. So I'm going to do a maximum of 2.5 inches and click off of it and click OK. And now what I just told Inventor is this part can move anywhere between 0 and 2.5 inches away. So if I move that, that works. Except 2.5 inches doesn't account for the thickness of this cap right here. It goes from this inner surface. So we can see that inner surface lines up right with the body. So I need to edit that constraint again. 
And instead of 2.5 inches, I need to take away the thickness of that cap, or 0.375 inches. So if I were to do 2.5 minus 3, or 0.375, I would get 2.125. Click OK. And now it stops just as a clamp would. Now, the one thing it doesn't do is it doesn't rotate as we're going in. Like it does if I move my mouse, but it doesn't spin with the screws. Doing that gets quite a bit harder. Um, and for the purposes of this lesson, there's no real point in covering that. So we're going to just kind of ignore that doesn't go and do that. All right, so let's check our mass now. Make sure we're all good. So I go to eye properties. And my mass is 1.097 pounds, which is exactly what it should be. So if you're at mass, you're good. If not, something is probably wrong with your assembly or your individual parts. All right. Once you're done that, go ahead and save it. And you are done.